What's up YouTube? We're going back with the Back to Basics series and today I'm just going to cover over um, shoe selection and what shoes you should pick and what makes it easier for fitting feet with keg shoes. Uh, probably in another little series um, I'll talk about uh, handmade shoes and picking out what section to use, how to measure for feet, and then building your shoes for the feet. So today, um, we've got a horse called Zorro, and he's got a little bit smaller feet, kind of for a fjord in my opinion. Um, so, hey buddy. Yeah, he's a good boy. So I've already got the front feet trimmed, and typically for him, um, I like to use the St. Croix. This is actually the Easy Plus, and then this is a Easy Plus Eventer. And I'm just gonna kind of show you the difference on why I'm picking this shoe versus this is a one, and then this is an ot. And then I'm gonna kind of show you why I'm gonna pick the ot versus the one. So. I'll pick up his feet here and I'll kind of show you, uh, I'll show you things that I use to make it easier for me to fit, such as using my ruler for getting the widest part of the foot. And then also you can use your ruler for establishing how uh, wide your heels are and where they should be. So let's do it. So we've got his foot trimmed here. Sorry, my lighting today isn't the greatest my flashlight decided to kick the bucket last yesterday so you can kind of see he doesn't really have very uh, thick hoof wall you know and likes to chip out here at the quarters um, in the past I have toe clipped him a couple times and the feet did okay but they actually do better with side clips or quarter clips is what I'm gonna do today so now that I have my foot trimmed and prepped, something that I'm gonna keep in mind while I'm shaping my, sh or trimming my foot before I go to the anvil is I'm looking to see where the quarters are and are they straight across from each other? Are they, you know, one up or one down? And then I'm also looking at the shape of my toe. I want to see, is it a broad toe? Is it a pointy toe? Do I want to come off my toe when I'm fitting it? And then also, I'm basically looking at my transitions between my toe to my quarters. So he's actually got fairly kind of straight, like a hind. You know, this is almost what I would call like a frind. So I'm keeping that in mind before I go to the anvil. And then I'm also looking at how do quarters come in are they kind of lazy or are they sharp and then dive in with him I would say they kind of almost dive in because you're coming out and then around versus like a typical front which would be kind of close to a shape like this where it's just kind of a lazy shape that's all those are the things I'm keeping in mind so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure my foot this one here is four and seven eighths so I know before I even make my trip to the foot with my shoe, my shoe needs to be at least four inches and seven eighths of an inch wide. There's no point in coming to the foot if you're at five inches, four and a half inches, there's no sense of even doing it. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I even come to my foot is I'm gonna measure my shoe and make sure it's at least four and seven eighths of an inch wide. And then you can also, easy bud, measure your width of your heels. So he's about two and five eighths of an inch right here. So you can measure your heels as well. I typically don't just because I've done it long enough, but you can go there. And then when you have your shoe shaped, you can uh, measure your width and then measure your heel width. And that'll kind of give you a pretty good rough estimation as far as now I'm ready to go to the foot. When you have those, when you have those, tips or that system kind of down you know what the biggest thing that saves is time and efficiency 
you know so that helps speed you up in every day you know because what does time equal time equals money the more uh, time you have in the day the more money you can make the more efficient you're going to be so and it's easier on your body one less trip to the horse which means one less time you got to bend over and get underneath of them so let's go to uh, go to the anvil and start shaping up these shoes Another thing I didn't talk about yet was when looking at your shoes on the feet, why you want to pick what you have. So here's the ot, and I can already tell by having that placed all the way up there at the toe, it's going to cover the foot. Which also makes me know if it's full out here like this, that means it's going to be kicked in and then it's also going to then in turn cover the foot. And then also you want to kind of keep in mind, you know, where your nail holes are accordingly for the foot itself when it become when it comes to where the white line is, how thick a hoof wall, where if you had this size one, that's already, if I have that placed right there against the hoof wall, I can see that that nail hole there is actually inside of my, my white line and that in turn is going to be coarse and then when your nail hole is inside the white line that's when you stick horses and that's when you're going to bleed them and then that's going to make them lame so you don't want to do that so we can look at this one here and i have it pressed up against the outside of my hoof wall there and i can see that nail hole there is on the white line so that in turn tells me that is going to be safe to use so that's why I'm going to be using the aught instead of the one. And you can't use a double aught because that'd be too small. And that's not going to cover. All right, now time for the anvil. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center punch my outside branch. That's going to help keep my shoes sorted as far as, you know, which side I'm shaping for. And then as far as my system goes for shaping my shoes and getting them ready to fit is first thing I'm going to do off the bat is I'm going to clip it. There's no sense of putting any shape in the shoe before you clip it because at, while you're clipping you know the shape alters and then you basically after you clip it you have to go to the horn anyways and forge in your clip a little bit so while you're doing that you can also be shaping your shoe you know doing two things at one time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clips on there and then my second heat is basically going to be my shaping heat and getting it ready for the foot. Let's get after it. All right, first thing we're going to do is clip it. We're going to quarter clip these, so start here. Get our source started. If I can hit the same spot, be nice. You don't necessarily have to pull both clips in one heat, but that's just something that takes time and practice. But it's more efficient. Then we'll draw out a clip. Now we got 
our first shoe clip. We're gonna clip our second shoe. Same process. Trying to hit in the same spot to develop the source for your clip. Flatten behind your clip. And then you flatten behind it there real quick. And then we drop. Same thing, now we got our clips drawn, and then we just need to forge them into the web. Flatten behind it. Forge this one in. Flatten behind it. Release the sole pressure. Now we'll back punch behind our nails here. Use our Kirkpatrick Forge Lube. Lube a doobie. Lube is your friend. All right, now we got this one clipped. We're gonna go in for our shaping heat. Now we're just gonna get our shape done, measure it, and then we'll end up going to the foot. So while I'm shaping this, I'm keeping in mind all those points that I talked about earlier. You got a bit of a pointy toe, and then it comes off straight like a hind, and then you've got a quarter that dives in there fairly good. And now flatten that branch, do the other side. It's got a fairly pointy toe. So I'm gonna set my toe, and then I'm gonna straighten out my branch. Maybe flatten this a little bit. And now we go to our quarter. I can already tell I'm too pointy. This is for the, uh, the left front. That foot there measured just over four and five eighths. And I'm at four and seven eighths now, so I need to come in.
Same thing. I'm going to start with my toe. It's got a fairly pointy toe. I'm going to knock it in a little bit. And then straighten out behind my clip to my quarter. Now I'll put my shape in there for my quarter. Now we'll do the medial branch. Now we'll do the quarter. Now we'll measure it. I'm at five right now, so I know I need to come in. And then I remember the, uh, we can measure our heels here. He was at, so we're gonna go center of stock. We're not gonna go inside. We're gonna measure from center of stock to center of stock. And that's at two and a half. We're at four and 15 sixteenths there which is where I want to be because I want to put on a little bit of boxing and I want to fit that foot with just a wee little bit of width. Now we get our shoe flat so we can go burn it. Now we pinch our clips. Now, if you draw a clip and it's kind of off in the wind like that, one thing you can do, and not even have to go to the grinder, is you just grab an old, like a hot rasp, you just come up here on the horn, and then you go rasp behind it. This rasp is actually pretty sharp. There, now the, wrap, now the clip's not in the wind anymore. It's usually a quick way to shape your clips before you burn them and not needing a vise or a grinder. All right, now we're ready to go to the foot. All right, now we're here at the horse. We're gonna go in for our first burn. See how close we are. First thing I want to do is I want to get my clips burned in. All right, now we can go in. It's always a good sign too when you have, when you went in for your first burn and you almost got basically a whole solid burn, meaning one, your shoe is flat, and two, your foot is flat. Now we can finish off and finish our burn and check our fit. We're gonna rasp off our sharp edges here. Now I'm obviously not going to get contact here and here between my foot and the shoe just because those are low spots and they're basically chunked out of the foot. Now I can look at it and I can almost tell, I can pretty much see, I just need to come out with my heels just a little bit. Actually not much at all. It burned the line to me a little bit. Let's see here. 
So my foot is right against where kind of the bevel is for where I'm gonna do my boxing. And right through here, fit just outside of it, because there is a little bit of hoof wall there missing. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the anvil, I'm just gonna open that out just a wee little bit, so that'll give me a little bit of width there for some boxing, and then I'm not gonna be fit too tight. All right, so we just need to fix this shape just a wee little bit. We just need to open up those heels just a tiny little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have daylight there between the shoe and the horn, and that's gonna allow me to shape it and not forge it. Flatten it, now we'll do the same to the other side. Looking at for the daylight right there. And now we gotta flatten it. All right, we're gonna burn on our left front. I'm gonna start off by burning in the clips first. I'm not so worried about pressing down on my shoe yet because I want to get the clips fit in there or at least get a mark where the burn is. Start out by knifing out at the top. Clips are meant to be flush with the hoof wall and not pounded out on the outside of them. Our clips knifed out, now we can try and get Check for our fit and get a solid burn. We'll rasp around our sharp edges here. Now we've got a solid burn across our foot. Now we're gonna look at our shoe. I can see already I'm tight in both my heels, so my heels have to come out. Yep, just tight there. The inside's a little bit better, but I still want to kick that out. So now we'll go to the anvil and we'll fix our shape. We're going to basically do the same thing we did with the other shoe. We're just going to open up those heels a little bit. So I'm grabbing up at my opposite toenail. Have air gap in between there where I want to shape it. Just gonna kick it out a little bit. Now we're gonna do the same on the medial branch. I'm basically going to the opposing toenail. Now we're gonna box the shoe. We're keeping in mind where our burn is, well, I've kicked it out so I know how much boxing I want to put on there. Something else I think is uh, pretty important when fitting up horseshoes is the safing. I always Think it's pretty dang crucial to have your inside branch nice and soft you know so that way if they do brush up on the opposing limb you know you're not gonna have a sharp edge that could you know potentially cut the horse or injure them you know usually one of the first things that goes in my mind is safety you know I want to make sure that the horse is safe and then I'm also thinking I don't want to fit it crazy long or wide because I don't want the horse to pull the shoe. You know, I just want to fit the foot. You know, fit what is there. You know, I'm not trying to go super crazy with a bunch of length, a bunch of width. You know, just fit the foot conservatively, which for whatever is appropriate. And uh, yeah, you know, those are just the basics. The basics of horseshoeing. So I'm gonna get these nailed up, finish them up. And then, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. If you'd like to even more, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Appreciate it. See you at the next one.
And one thing I failed to mention was the reason why I chose quarter clips over a toe clip. One being, I wanted to use less nails. So with a toe clip, it still takes stress off the nails, but I believe I've heard that one clip is equal to like two nails or something like that. So I wanted to use quarter clips just because it doesn't have super thick hoof wall. And uh, you know, I, I didn't want to use the least amount of nails as possible. You know, so that way I'm not stressing the hoof wall and putting a ton of nail holes in the foot. Because it doesn't easily grow a ton of ton of hoof wall length either. So so that way I can just four nail them. You know, one thing that becomes easier is your nailing. When you have properly fit your shoes, you know, your nail on becomes a lot easier and your nail lines will get a lot better whenever your shoe is fit, you know, appropriately. Because basically, if your nail holes are fine, they're going to come out low. If your nail holes are coarse, they're probably not going to come out and you're gonna end up sticking that horse and laming that horse, which is no bueno. So, that's why you want your nail holes to be, you know, lined up with the white line. So that way you can have strong, strong nails and then strong clenches. Sweet. 